Okay, guys. In the previous video, we have just talked about uh, this marker-assisted selection, which is which will be required in this video also, because in this video we'll be talking about quantitative trait loci mapping or QTL mapping. So let me write it here: quantitative trait loci, okay, or QTL. Now this quantitative trait loci mapping. Uh, for that understanding, you must understand the marker assisted selection first. So let me tell you in the brief that in this case, what we are having, we are having four different types of plants. Now, the actual goal of our experiment is to take only those plants which are drought tolerant. We need to select only drought tolerant plant from the rest of the plant species and not only selecting them, but also we need to uh, make a gene or genetic element responsible for the uh, presence of those drought tolerant nature in those plants how can form this right now let's say here in this these are the four different type of plant species among them we visualize over years that the species type 1 and 3 these two type of uh, plants they are naturally drought tolerant in nature so the drought tolerant is little bit more for them over rest of the other right so we know that now how can you know which are the genes responsible for them so we'll extract the DNA so for that we extract the DNA from all these plants and then we load a gel. After loading the gel, what we get, what we find here is that we are finding this banding pattern. Now by looking at the banding pattern, what we can tell that in all of them four, we are having a typical plant uh, genomic banding, uh, banding for some housekeeping genes which are expressing in all the different plant species, in the rest of the four plant species. But among them, this one and three is having a special type of band. Uh, we have uh, talked about that, that let's say that this band is at 950 base pair not KB I have mentioned it in an earlier video KB KB is very large so 950 base pair band so this band present here so which is having the length of 950 base pair and once we get this band at this particular location what we can tell is that these bands are responsible uh, for little bit for the expression of the drought tolerant nature of this plant species 1 and 3 which are not found in 2 and 4 that's why the 2 and 4 plants are not uh, drought tolerant that much okay so that is so far is our expression of the uh, marker assisted selection and from that way you can tell we can take all those plants in from a field which are having these two type of marker and we select them we cross breed them so that we can uh, make this particular gene or gene marker stable in, in this total generations so that we get only drought tolerant plants over other type of plants right so in QTL what we are doing, after establishing this particular step, after establishing or uh, running the gel, we know that these are the markers, these are the gene markers that are associated with this drought tolerant nature, right? Now after that, we I have told you in the marker uh, video, in the video we, when we talk about genetic markers, that the marker can be of three different types, visual marker, here which is the drought tolerant, molecular marker, here is, is the gene, and obviously there are some biochemical markers which are giving us the expression of some gene, genes like this, right? Now if we talk about those biochemical markers, enzyme activity is a type of biochemical marker. So like those enzyme activity and different biochemical marker activities, we can select plants based on those biochemical markers also. For example, from this uh, lot of different uh, variety of plant in a field, we can take, uh, we, we select all this drought tolerant plant. In previous cases, we isolate the DNA from them. But now what we are doing, we are extracting the enzymes, we are extracting and purifying enzymes. After purifying enzymes, what we get our purified enzyme, let's say this one. Now all of, from all the different variety we get this. From the drought tolerant plant as well as from a non drought tolerant plant. So after getting all of them from the drought tolerant plant in this case, because we know that this gene is responsible for the drought tolerant in some extent. That's why they are present there. But we need to confirm this, that yes, presence of this gene is responsible for the drought tolerant. We haven't concluded yet. Just looking at this band uh, won't tell us that truth, right? So for that, we need to confirm. How can we confirm? We get some enzymes, we pick some enzymes, which can be uh, very important enzymes for drought tolerance, right? Drought tolerance. So let's say this is an enzyme A, which is responsible for the drought tolerance, which is characterized previously. The enzyme A is required uh, for having good drought tolerant nature for a plant. 
Now what we'll find now, after extracting all this enzyme A from the plants, we are trying to find whether this enzyme A is present in the species 1 and C or not. If we find the expression of enzyme A in those plants carrying this gene, uh, 9 base pair, 950 base pair gene for 1 and 3, these two type of plant species, what we can tell is that the genes that are present in species 1 and C, they are a little bit responsible for the expression of this gene, right? The expression of this protein, right? So we can tell probably that these genes are coding some enzymes. Among them, this is the type of enzyme which are coded by the segment of DNA, which we have identified. Now, if this is the case, then we can tell, yes, we have uh, successfully isolated the genetic marker for drought tolerant disease. Now, for comparing this, we need to provide a chart. We need to make what is called a diagram, a map. Now, for this mapping, let's say if, if this is a graph in this graph what we will do we'll put this value of gene markers we'll put the uh, dna fragments here so we take all these fragments remember what frag fragments we get we take uh, the value of all these dna fragments in the x axis and in the y axis we'll be rating as biochemical parameter right once we get them, so biochemical parameters will be plotted here. So after that, plotting all this data, it will provide us a graph, right? And this graph is not a simple type of graph. This is a regression graph. Using statistical softwares, what we'll be performing here, a regression analysis. And after forming the regression analysis, what we'll get, we get a regression coefficient of x on y as well as y on x which is the basics of regression. So then what we get the values. Now using those values for all these different plants, what we get a map of all their biochemical parameters over the genes, right? So which genes are responsible with biochemical parameters, whether at all they are responsible uh, for their relatable uh, uh, or not, right? We get this idea by comparing, by, by making the regression analysis of those two type of different markers, right? So this marker correlation is important. And once we get the information of the marker correlation, what we can conclude is that, yes, these are the genes and these are the biochemical parameters which are responsible with each other, relatable with each other. That means due to the presence of this gene, these particular enzymes are getting expressed. Due to the expression of these enzymes, we get the trait of drought tolerance. So we are co correlating everything with each other only after committing that. And what we can tell is that, yes, if this is the chromosome of plants in this chromosome, here it is the place, this is the particular loci where this gene is found, this, this particular gene, 90, 950 BP gene is found. We analyze uh, the sequencing, we blast it in the uh, bioinformat using bioinformatics tool to find which part of the normal genome of plant carries this particular base pair or this type of sequence. We get this area, we get a particular loci which is this loci, red loci. Now this loci is also responsible for the expression of this particular enzyme. Then you can tell that yes, the, they are correlatable. That means this gene are coding this enzymes. And as a result of that, drought tolerant uh, increases in plant species. So this, what we can call, we can map this loci among the whole nucleus, whole chromosome, all the different chromosomes of a plant. There are a lot of chromosomes. Among those chromosomes, we can map a particular trait in a particular genetic uh, or gene loci, right? And this loci, what we, can, what we place here, the value for the enzyme activity, which is quantitable, right? So we can quantitate the value of the enzyme activity. We can quantitate the grain length and all these things. If we, here is only one example I have talked about the... Uh, enzyme activity. We can take many different parameters, biochemical parameters. So all of them are quantitatable. So they are quanti, quanti, uh, let's say countable and quantitative. And obviously they are uh, place, present in a particular locus. We can get the value. So that's why they are called quantitative trait loci because a particular trait is quantitable. And obviously they present in a particular loci. And we mark the presence of that trait in this particular loci which is responsible for a particular trait of our interest. So that's why it is called QTL mapping. And that's how we get the value of QTLs. Okay, so that's it. And I hope that's helpful. Thank you.